In this video, we will take a look at how I used Wolfram Alpha and circle packing to solve an industrial design issue. Here we go. I was working with the design of this device, which helps its users to wake up uh, with the um, help of light in the morning. And we had to take uh, 25 LEDs and put those inside the circular part that lights up. So I was working with the exterior design of this. And while I was doing that, I noticed that my colleagues were having a hard time uh, trying to fit those 25 LEDs uh, correctly. Some people even said that we may have to make the device shape uh, rectangular if they can't place the LEDs perfectly. And these here were some of their attempts. As you can see, these leave a lot of unused space and are not very optimal. The right hand side version is better, but not perfect. There actually had to be an even spacing between all the LEDs, so that's not going to work. The LED size is 3 millimeters, and there should be a safe area of approximately 7.5 millimeters radius around it. There is also a reflective board that is placed over the PCB, and there are holes for the LEDs, and those should have a diameter of 10 millimeters or so. Even spacing is really important here. And without solving this, they could not even decide what the size of the circular lamp part should be in the end. I wanted to help them and uh, I remembered something. Uh, I remember this concept called circle packing. Uh, what does that mean? That is, uh, this is from Wikipedia. In geometry, circle packing is the study of the arrangement of circles of equal or varying sizes on a given surface such that no overlapping occurs and so that no circle can be enlarged without creating an overlap. My first step was to see if I could find some um, vector data for that amount of uh, circles that I need. I looked around and I could see that Wikipedia has an article called Circle Packing in a Circle. Over there they have the solutions up to 20 circles as SVG files, but I was looking for 25. So I had to still look around. And I remembered Wolfram Alpha, uh, which is a site that I had already uh, used a few times for some mathematical stuff. So I decided to check if Wolfram Alpha could solve this circle packing issue for me. And it certainly did solve it. And I will show you how it did that. Here we are in Wolfram Alpha, and let's start by asking what we want to know. And we will do that by typing packing 25 circles in a circle, and let's hit enter. Okay, there's the result. Look at that, that's 25 circles inside a circle. There are some other layouts here too, but this one here on the top is definitely the one we want to use. Now, uh, you can use this image. You can download this image here and use it in Illustrator, for example. It's not going to be a super accurate duplication, but Mm, at least you'll get a fairly close um, approximation of the locations of these circles. I'm using the Pro version, so I can download this uh, vector data here. For example, in SVG format. Of 
Great. Now that we have the circle packing data, how are we going to use it? Let's take a look. First thing we notice is that Wolfram Alpha has put these circles in a strange angle. There is actually symmetry here in the middle, but it's just in an angle, it's difficult to see. We need to rotate the whole thing. The other thing we need to do is to find the center points of all the circles, because we're going to mainly work with the center points first. And we're going to look at the distances between those central points and um, resize everything in Rhino. I'm going to use Rhino just because I use it a lot, but you can use pretty much any CAD package. It's easy to import the vector data. Or if you use the bitmap image in Illustrator, redrew it in Illustrator, you can then take that vector data from Illustrator to your favorite CAD package. But I'm going to show you how to do this in Rhino. We start by importing the data from Wolfram Alpha. And first thing we do is we change this import fills as boundary curves. Uh, easier that way. We don't need any fills. Import. Okay. Now we have to do a bit of cleaning. We notice that there is still there are two curves on top of each other. Every circle is now uh, duplicate. So we'll choose one of these and go into select objects and by color. This way we have chosen selected all of the um, circles with that same color. And we'll just hit delete and okay, now we should have, okay, yes, we have now removed the duplicates. Good. So that was the first step. Let's take a look at that symmetry next. Let's just uh, draw a line here. The symmetry should be here. Yeah, it's around there. It's roughly there. Okay, so we need to figure out how to rotate this properly and accurately. Let's start by, okay, so we need to figure out the center point for this circle and the point where these two circles touch. Okay, let's do that by first selecting both of these. Let's go to Analyze, Mass Properties, Area Centroid. Okay, now we got the point which is between them. Now let's do the same for this one. I'll just hit Spacebar, and we now have the Area Centroid for this circle. Great. This should be our symmetry line. Let me just grab the, uh, activate the point snap, and we'll create a line between these two points. So this here is our symmetry. Now let's select all. Uh, I'll just group it, just in case. And let's rotate. We have the point snap on. I'll just rotate from that point to that point. I'll press shift. There we go. Now we have a nice and clean version of these circles. Okay, let's start figuring out the center points of the circles. And, oh, let me just move this to the center line. Let me just remove the point snap. Okay, there we go. Now it's in the middle. Okay, because we can actually mirror a lot of this stuff. So let's just first ungroup. And uh, the way to 
figure out the center points is just the way we did it with the symmetry line. So we'll use the area centroid command here. So we'll, now we can select the next circle and just press spacebar. We get the center point automatically. We'll just go through these circles like this, selecting them and pressing spacebar. Okay, I did the right hand side because we can actually mirror this later to the left side. I also want to get a center point for the large circle. I'll just press enter, uh, sorry, spacebar again. And we have it here in the middle. I'm going to rename this point. I'll give it a name. Um, let's call it main so that we don't confuse it with the uh, circle centers later. I'll also remove this point we created earlier for the symmetry line, because we don't need that anymore. I have selected the points on the right hand side. We don't need the ones in the middle, uh, but we will mirror these ones. And we will do that by going to the mirror command. We'll make sure that our endpoint snap is on. We'll use this symmetry line like that. Okay. Then we can actually remove these circles. We don't need them anymore. Okay. The next thing we want to do is scaling. And we want to remember that the distance between two LEDs should be 15 millimeters from center to center because we need a 7.5 millimeter radius around every LED. So that equals 15 millimeters of distance. Now let's do a, let's check something here. What is the distance between this point to this? It is 6.976. And this one is 6.953. Okay, we want to scale using the shorter distance. Let's create a line, just a vertical line somewhere, and let's make it 15 millimeters long. Now I'll group these. I will first move this point to the end of this line, then scale 2D. I'll scale the distance between these two points to match the length of this line. There we go. Let's remove the line. Let's zoom out. Let's move the whole thing to the middle. There we go. Let's just simulate with a circle. Let's try from here. Yep, we have a 15 millimeter distance. We also have larger distances, that doesn't matter. As long as we have at least 15 millimeters. Good. Then I created this drawing of the LED. This is the rectangular LED component, three times three millimeters. This here is the 10 millimeter opening that goes, uh, that is on the reflective board. And the green thing here is the 15 millimeter safe area around every LED. Let's look at the end result, which is here. So I've populated all the points with this LED drawing. We can see they are nicely evenly distributed. There are no conflicts between these um, safe areas. And we can now also see that the whole diameter of this round lamp part must be at least 86.29 millimeters. Rather, well, 
86.3 millimeters. That is the minimum diameter for this part. So this project happened many years ago, and um, I recently remember how fun it was to work with, uh, especially solving this problem. It was interesting to find out how Wolfram Alpha was able to help me with an industrial design issue. In the end, I um, created that kind of um, CAD drawing. I gave that to the engineers. They were able to take all the center points um, and see all the safe areas and uh, the reflective board openings and everything easily from the CAD file. So that's how we solved a problem with circle packing using Wolfram Alpha, using CAD. Thanks for watching.